May the name of the Lord be glorified. <clears throat> I thank God for enabling me to stand before you uh, with the word of God uh, one more time. And thank you for all your praise and support and encouragement in the past days. And uh, I request uh, that you continue to do those things. And forget and forgive me, my grammar and all my vocabulary. If you got the message, then that is enough for me. <clears throat> I was, uh, when I was preparing for uh, a message for today, I prayed and uh, God gave me a subject. And I meditate upon it and I collected all the, all the resources means that commentaries and uh, messages, notes, and all these things. When I was going through deeper in that, that message, I feel that this message is for me. And this message, uh, it, is, it encouraged me and edified me. And uh, I, I learned a lot of lessons from this message. And we read like this uh, in Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And verse 17. That the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So I was, I was encouraged all this, um, this topic and uh, edified. I, I learned a lot of lessons from, from this part of this uh, book. So I am sharing with you that you may also encourage and inspire with this particular passage from the scripture. <clears throat> Today's my message is from the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah the wall builder. You might heard several messages from this uh, particular book. Uh, today I just uh, refresh your thoughts and uh, uh, you are, uh, I will remind some of the thoughts. I, I got it, I, I received and that also I am sharing with you. <clears throat> the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah means means, uh, the, uh, the word of Nehemiah means comforter or comfort of Yahweh. Jehovah comforts. That is the word meaning. In the book of Nehemiah, we see the building of the wall around Jerusalem. The temple hall, uh, had already been built by Serubabel and uh, Jeshua, son of uh, Josadak. We read in Ezra chapter 3 verse 2. Esra and Nehemiah were lived in the same period of time. Under, under the leadership of Serubabil, Haggai, Zechariah, and Jeshua, they had the burden to build the temple. And they built the temple in, in four years. We read that. The burden of Esra was, we read that, to teach the word of God in a right way. And the burden of Nehemiah, we see that, to build the city and re-establish in the covenant that the people left from their, uh, the covenant and the promises. <clears throat> we see that Nehemiah was born in captivity. He is uh, an example of, uh, example of a very good organizer. He managed everything and uh, in the work, he encouraged every every people in the work, and we see that he met opposition, and he encountered in uh, injustice, and keep going till the wall were completed in 52 days. <clears throat> when he was in the captivity in Babylon, yet he identified. Jerusalem and temple 
and the festival. This, uh, we read that Psalm 137 is a psalm of captivity. We know that. In Psalm 137, 5 and 6, we read that, If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget it, its skill. If I do not remember you, let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. We see a great love and desire and burden and concern about Jerusalem and the temple and the festival for the Jewish people. <clears throat> Few months uh, before, I was watching a, a documentary about, about the about the um, immigration of the Jewish people to to Israel. Uh, they were in the they were in the Kochi, that is the part uh, the southern southern part of India. After the creation of Israel, 1948, they were migrated to Israel. Now there were uh, there were uh, five to six six families there. Uh, left in that, that place, Kuchi. Uh, there was a synagogue and uh, they around lived uh, 2,000 people in 1970s and all are left that place and they migrated to Israel. <coughs> they believe that, that their ancestors were slaves in Babylon and they came 2,000 years before that place. Now only few of them left. Five or uh, six people are left in uh, Kochi. <clears throat> there is a Jewish lady, 96 year old lady, is uh, where is residing in Kochi. Her name is Sarah Jacob Cohen. <clears throat> Some news reporter came and uh, interviewed uh, her. And uh, he born and brought up in Kochi. And she had a, a garment shop there, and uh, her husband was a income tax officer, retired income tax officer in Kuching, and uh, he passed away. So she was alone, and she had no children. She is staying alone there, <coughs> and she is surviving with the with the uh, neighborhood families. And uh, yeah, the uh, the reporters interviewed her, and uh, finally. They asked the question, where would you like to be in your life? And she replied this, like this, I want to go to Israel. That is her desire. Why I said this, you know, uh, these people, the, the Jewish people have the great burden and concern and love for their country. And uh, God gave, gave in their heart that love and concern to their country and the temple and the festival, all these things. And here we uh, see another person, his name is Nehemiah. Uh, we are going to the uh, text. Before uh, we are uh, going to the text, this, uh, this book will divide into two portions. That is chapter 1 to 7. Uh, the first one is serving the king and the second inspecting the broken wall by Nehemiah, organizing the residence and uh, rebuilding the wall. And chapter 8 to 13, we see that teaching the God of uh, uh, God's word by Ezra and festival of tabernacle and or uh, called shelter is re-established. And the people confess their sin. And finally, we see that uh, dedicating the wall. Before we go into the text, uh, I want to share you uh, some little bit of background of this, uh, this book, some history. There, is a, there are uh, three returns of exile. Basically, there are two movements we read in the scripture. The people are moving from the Egypt to Canaan. That is the first movement. And the second movement we see that the people 
moving from Babylon to Israel or Jerusalem. And after the captivity of 70 years, we read that in the, in the book of Daniel. And after the 70 years of captivity, under the leadership of Serubabel and Zechariah, we re, uh, see that the temple is built in four years. That is the that that is happened in the year of uh, 538 BC. The same period of time, Haggai and Zechariah is prophesy. Both people. So you go to the uh, book of Haggai and Zechariah, you can find all these details. And there is a gap of 57 years in the after this building the temple. That time uh, time period of Esther the, was the queen of Persia. That has happened in uh, BC 483 to uh, 473. That is what uh, we see that. And then again after the gap of 57 years, es uh, under the leadership of Esra, we see the people get reformed and really dedicated their life to God. And again, there is a 12 years of gap. And uh, under the uh, leadership of Nehemiah, we see that uh, the wall around the Jerusalem uh, was built, rebuilt. That is happened in 444 BC. And after that, uh, after 12 years, Nehemiah came back again to Jerusalem and uh, and uh, find out the uh, things, uh, uh, what are the things going on. And uh, he uh, check everything is in uh, in control or uh, everything is executed. That was, uh, that's why he came back as a governor and uh, he came uh, 430 BC in Jerusalem again. And after uh, that, the same period of time, Malachi is prophesied. You know that, that in his book. And after Malachi, we know that there is a 400 years of uh, silent period. Means God didn't prophesy or talk to a, with, through any prophecies in that time. God got silent. And after that 400 period of time, we know that John the Baptist came and followed our Savior, Jesus Christ, came as an Emmanuel on this earth and as a savior. So uh, then we will uh, go to the uh, chapter, Nehemiah chapter 1, verse uh, 1 to 3. We read like this The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah, uh, it came to pass in the month of Chislev uh, in the 20th year as I was in. Susan, the citadel, that Hanani, one of my brethren, came with men from Judah, and I asked them, them concerning the Jews who had escaped, who had survived the ca captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, the survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are, there is great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is also broken down and the gates are burned with the fire. So, so this, is the, this is the thing uh, starting. When he was in the, in the, um, the palace of Sus, uh, Susan and the, uh, that the Hanani, one of my brother, one of his uh, co-brother came and he Asked him about the about the situation of Jerusalem and the, and the things are going around that. So he had a whenever he he was in that captivity in the palace, he is working. But he had a concern about the God's um, people and the God's church and temple and surrounding things. So he had a concern. Then he asked Hananiah. Hananiah didn't, uh, didn't offer anything to uh, to Nehemiah. 
So he had a concern. Then only he asked about the about the matter is going around Jerusalem. So God having God choose a person for his work only he having a concern and burden and he uh, only the, the the God only choose those kind of persons to for his work. So if we have a concern only God can choose us for his work. So we need a concern about the people and uh, uh, God's church and all these things. Then only God, God will choose us and uh, do uh, and uh, gave a task for us. And when we, uh, when he heard of all these things and they said uh, and they said to me the survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are their great distress and reproach. The wall, wall of Jerusalem is also broken down and its gates are burned with the fire. And verse 4, we read this. He heard the, the walls and the, the gates are broken, all these things. And he did one thing. So it was uh, when I heard these thing, words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. When, I, when he heard the, the people of uh, God, God's people is in distress, in reproach, and the walls of the building, the Jerusalem is broken down, he heard all these things. He didn't suddenly go to the, the king and palace and he's asking for help and I want to go back to, the, uh, back to Jerusalem and build the, build the wall, all these things. No. He, he just prayed, sat down, and wept and mourned for many days. How much concern this person have the God's work and God's people? He wept and mourned. You know how how many times we we wept and mourned about the the people around the world in persecution and they are going in distress, and the church is. In a, in, a, in a situation of, uh, in a pathetic situation, how much time we wept and mourned and fasted and prayed God. And he heard these things. Suddenly, he went to kneel down and pray to God for deliverance. That's what we, we uh, read in, a, uh, in verse 4. And he, he admit himself that the reason for this reproach and the people is in distress is the, is the matter is we, we, we read in chapter six, uh, verse 6 later part which we, he confessed the sins of the children of Israel which he have, he have sinned against you both my father's house and I have sinned. This is because of my father's sin and my sins the situation is in a pathetic condition. We have to confess our sins. We have to admit our, our situation. And we were sin. And that's why we are in the captivity. And that's why uh, God's work is not done there. The walls are still broken. And the gates are not, not, not placed. The, in the walls, walls and uh, gates means in, in Isaiah chapter 60 verse uh, 18 we read that the walls are called the, the walls of salvation and the gates of uh, gates of praises. The walls keep uh, uh, speaks that it is a separation from the world and the uh, security and God desires that the church has been separate from the world. There should be a wall around the temple, and there is there is no uh, there is no wall around that. And we see that the temple was finished in uh, seventy years before, and after seventy years, there is no wall. It means there is no separation with the with the world. All are same. 
the worldly people can jump into the into the temple very easily there is a there is a, a particular method or there is a particular way to get into the temple we read that i am the way i am the gate only through jesus christ we can enter into his into his presence into his into the church into the temple otherwise we read, read that who whoever jump over the over the wall they are thief we are reading like that so after uh, the 70 years the walls are broken and uh, no separation with the word word we see that the the temple is completed in four years before there is a worship there is a praise and everything everything is going on the same way but there is no separation with the world god want his people be separated from the uh, from the world we need a separation from the world and and also we see that there is a security and there is a safety in god's hand we uh, we see that chapter 1 verse 4 uh, he prayed many days and he was uh, he was uh, in, you, we know that he was a man of prayer so we see that he he was a man of prayer what about the, the whether uh, he prayed many days and uh, uh, he mourned and he wept and he fasted so many days we see uh, in matthew chapter 14 verse uh, 22 we see that after the after feeding the 5000 pe- people uh, people and uh, jesus sent them their houses and we see that and and after that uh, jesus sent the disciples to the other shore and jesus went to the prayer of mount you know that. so uh, i was thinking that if jesus ne- need to pray so how much we need to pray how much we need to pray we we need to pray without ceasing if jesus prayed then we also need to pray nehemiah is a man of prayer <coughs> and we see that he he admit his sin and his father's sin and he uh, he admit everything and uh, we sin we our and our father sinned against you that is why we are in we are in captivity and we are in reproach and uh, and uh, we, are, we we don't have a separation with the with the world and all these things and we see that uh, chapter 1 words uh, 11 letter part oh oh lord i pray please let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servant who desire to fear your name and let your servant prosper this day i pray and grant him mercy in the sight of his this man for i was the king's cupbearer so he was the uh, duty of cupbearer in the palace that is a that is a very serious job he is doing is he is uh, he's t- uh, tasting the food and uh, he is tasting the wine while he is giving to the um, uh, uh, to the king so it is it was a very serious job so people can uh, um, do anything with the food and uh, uh, threaten his life of the king it is happened so that person is very dependable he is uh, living close to the palace and he is in a good situation he his food and um, uh, dressing all these things in a, in a uh, in a particular way in a separate way he is very close to the king that's what we we understand and when we see chapter 2 and it came to pass the month of nisan in the 20th year king artaxis when wine was before him that i took the wine and gave to the 
to the king now had never been sad in his presence before so he he could not sad before the king that's why he uh, he was sad before the king, uh, king and uh, king what was noticed that he should not sad he can, he cannot play around the, his thoughts of the uh, the king that is very dangerous his uh, life uh, even threatened uh, and that time therefore uh, uh, what's to therefore the king said king said to me why is your face is sad since you are uh, you are not sick this is nothing but sorrow of heart so i because dreadfully of heart when he uh, when this king asked uh, nahamaya that's why you are sad this is not your sickness or something else you you are facing that king is asking asks asking to him and he is replied that i become dreadfully afraid you know he is a humble person he admit his weakness or his fear in front of the uh, king we can we can free, free uh, fear sometimes it's happen it's natural but we don't do not act according to fear fear is opposite the faith what we we are we are following and what uh, what is happened and said to the king may the king live forever why should i face not be sad when the city the place of my father's tomb lies waste and it is gates are burned with fire and we see it's a verse four so i pray to the god to heaven that that very moment the god, uh, king asked him why you are face is sad the same moment he prayed to god a quick prayer a fast prayer you know every time in our in our life also we can practice this thing while in the when the scar while is in the workplace or we are facing some uh, some difficulties a quick prayer to god wherever you are you can do that the man the nehemiah he is a man of prayer he always pray to god and get the answer and uh, the king said to me the queen also sitting beside me verse 6 how long will you journey and when will you return so it pleased the king to send me and i set him a time you know this the same uh, king artaxerxes is stop the uh, building of the wall before years before and they had a complaint from this place and went there and this king stopped the uh, stopped the building of the wall and now you know this this nehemiah changed his um uh, changed his mind with the prayer he is praying uh, to god and when we'll see so the king granted him to go to jerusalem he gave him whatever he is required chapter 2 verse 10 we see when sanballat the horonite and uh, tobiah the ammonite official heard of it they were deeply disturbed that a man had come to seek the well being of the children of israel you know there the opposition starts you know that uh, this god he prayed to god and he get the answer and he he is going with a with all confidence in him and going to build the wall in israel then we see that there is there is opposition there why god can remove that that situation why god can remove the enemies from that that place in sanballat and tobia <clears throat> there we see the opposition started and this sanballat and tobia ha, ha, have no no problem with when this wall is building there
and God will send you with a task also there will be opposition uh, you have to face with that and we we know that uh, Jesus sent the disciples to the uh, opposite direct uh, uh, side of the shore and they we we read that he they Jesus forced them to go to the other shore and when they they are traveling to the other shore in the middle of the sea they face the storm they face the difficulties even jesus god sent us and with a task and we are going to do that there will be opposition satan will work we know that all around the world there are lot of lot of persecution towards the people why it is towards the christians why it is happening we are not doing anything wrong in, uh, uh, to them we are not doing any uh, any any harm with the, their we are not speaking uh, anything against their religion we are doing good we are doing uh, uh, poor, good for the poor people we are we are going the charity there but still people are against christians why it is satan do not want to build jesus kingdom or his church he don't want he don't like that that's that is the only reason whenever whenever see the persecution and uh, some place i was always wondering how it is happening they are not harming the people they are not against the people they are not talking against the religion all these things but still they are facing the problem satan didn't want his uh, god's people to to build up his kingdom on or his his uh, his church that is why satan is against against the people of god but you know that the final victory is god and his children only satan cannot defeat us we want to learn that 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 thing and they they come and uh, deeply disturbed that the man had come to seek the well being and the children of uh, israel they mocked and uh, they disturbed uh, their his work and chapter 2 verse 11 so i came to jerusalem and i was there 3 days then i arose in the night i was i and a few men with me i told no one what my god had put uh, put in my heart to do at jerusalem nor was there any animal with me except the one on which i rode he came uh, he reached uh, jerusalem and uh, three days he he got to go immediately to the people the noble people and uh, uh, gather all around the people and said i came to here and uh, i want to build the um, wall around the jerusalem no he didn't do that he uh, reached there and inspected the wall and uh, he spent three days he find the situation he studied well he planned well he organized thing very well then only he started his work and i went out uh, by night through the valley gate uh, to the serpent wall and the and the refuse gate and viewed the walls of jerusalem which were broken down and its gates were with, were burned with the fire <clears throat> verse 16 and the official did not know where i had gone or what i had done i had not yet told the jews the priests the nobles the officials or the others who did the work he didn't advertise or anything about why he came and what is his task or his thing he keep quiet he didn't say any of this matter to anyone he is not a person to advertise the task that god gave to him he don't want to uh, know everything all these things so he he kept up all these things secret and pray to god and plan everything and to according to his will verse 17 then i said to them you 
you see the distress that we uh, we are in uh, now in uh, how jerusalem lies waste and its gates are burned with fire come and let us build the wall of jerusalem that we may no longer be reproached so he encouraged all the people around jerusalem and they all come together and they they come together and they will arise and build the build the temple and they they started the started the walls and chapter 3 verse they they are rebuilding the wall he and uh, we know that he is a great organizer in the in uh, chapter 3 we didn't see his name but he is organized is in, in everything in in well he don't want his name to uh, present everywhere on or he is he is not exposing himself but he give all glory and honor only God. that is what we see and in uh, chapter 3 we see that then elia uh, elia sheep the high priest rose up with the brethren the priest and the build the sheep gate uh, and they consecrate it and hung its doors and he collected he encouraged the priest and the noble people all all the people and put together and they united and they come to build the wall around the jerusalem so he he encouraged everyone he led everyone and he is a great leader to collect every everyone come bring together in one mind that's the way he uh, he he do the work and in the chapter 3 uh, verse uh, all words we see that next to eliashib next to them uh, mary moth next to the tekoites next to them um, melamite and next to next to next to all these things so very they, they are very close there is no gap in between them they are building the wall in very very close relation with that one by one each brother work together to build the wall it's a lesson for us to we will uh, we will have together come together and build his church and work for his uh, his glory and things will happen and we know uh, chapter 3 uh, verse 5 we read that they the tekoites made repairs but their nobles did not put their shoulders to the work of their love the nobles of tekoites they didn't give their shoulder to the work they think that they this work god's work is not for us they don't want to dirty your their hands they don't want to take the uh, they uh, rubbles and they don't want the bricks and they don't want to ta- take the mortar all these things they don't want to dirty their hands the nobles of the class they didn't they didn't cooperate with this this work we are reading in chapter 3 uh, verse 5 and he is a great organizer and uh, everybody uh, got their job they are uh, they are all united and they are started their uh, work and they are building the wall together even the high priest they they didn't sat and supervise they are they are started their work we see that everybody is working with togetherness and help each other and and the work uh, building is going on <clears throat> but we still see that noble so techwise they didn't they didn't uh, show the support their work that's what we reading in, in chapter f- uh, verse 5 and continue chapter 4 and this there is a uh, uh, chapter 3 uh, verse 14 we see this melkijab the son of uh, rekab leader of the dis- uh, districts of beth hakrim repairs the refuse gate he built it and hung its doors with its bolts and bars the refuse gate that means dung gate that is that is the place all the all the 
trashes and the, all the garbages, the waste of the animals, all putting that place and put fire. That place is always odor and uh, smelling. All these dirty are there the, uh, uh, in that gate. That is that the gate of Dung Gate. And these people, they went there and did that work. That is what we see that. They are ready to work with that, that dirty place. They are willing to do that. That God specially mentioned their names in, in, the, in his book. And we see that the leaders, uh, uh, verse 19, and the leaders of Mizpah repairs another section and in front of the uh, Aro, uh, Aromori at the birthdays after his Baruch, the sons of Sabadi, Sabi carefully repairs. All these names who have worked earnestly, who have worked carefully, who have worked wherever the places they work, and all these things God mentioned. And those who are not, not work, that also God mentioned that, that day. So we don't, we don't uh, want to read all these names, we don't following all these names, but God knows each name and he wrote it in his book. In the church we know the, all the work, we, can, we should do that. In the kitchen, in a social gathering, after that, after that cleaning work, all these things, we have to do it. God is considering who is doing all this work. Sometimes we have to put uh, salt around the building and when the summer time is coming, we have to uh, cut grasses. We are not uh, assigned these things for few people, no. We all to come together and give, give hand for this work. God will see that. Maybe people will not see that. People will not recognize those things. But definitely, God will recognize he wrote his name on the <clears throat> and for uh, words uh, for words uh, chapter 4 verse 1 but it is it is so happened when uh, Sanballat heard that they were rebuilding the wall that they were uh, they were furious and very in, indignant and mocked the Jewish people and they, were, they heard that uh, verse 4, Hear our, our, our God, for we are despised to turn their reproach on their own hands, hurts, and give them a plunder to a land of captivity. Whenever the, whenever the enemy come to attack them and mock them, and they are facing, so we, we see that he, he didn't go and face the enemy and against the enemy, he didn't do that. He kneeled down and he prayed. The enemy they did not give up all the time. He is following. He is trying. Have each time. And but he, he didn't he didn't respond in that way that he against them. But he prayed. That's what we uh, see. And we'll uh, chapter five. Uh, Nehemiah uh, deals with the, the, with the oppression and uh, and also we see that chapter five with uh, his good character in in verse eighteen. I did not demand the governor provisions because the bondage was heavy on his people. He is the person who is taking the money from his pocket and spend for God. He is not taking any provision that. Go, uh, the, the governor provided with them even that he is not taken what a great man that is what an example for us the ladies, the people, those who are waiting for the money or they are taking from the church fund and doing all these things maybe but this person here, we see that an example, he didn't take even his Provisions that is provided for him. He didn't take anything. And chapter uh, 
Six, we see that uh, to the son Balad and Geshom send me, uh, send me saying, come, let us, let us meet together among the village in the, in the plain of Ono, but they thought, do me harm. And the enemies following again, and they sent five times to Nehemiah to, uh, to, for a meeting with them. So he didn't compromise with any any of these uh, these things, and we see that uh, he prayed again. Uh, verse fourteen: My God, remember Tobiah and Sanballat, according to these de- their words, and uh, prophetess Noadia uh, and the rest of the prophets who would have made me afraid. And this he prayed again, and we see that chapter uh, uh, six verse sixteen. Later part, this work was done by our God. And they, they finished the work in 52 days. And one more thing I want to show before I'm closing. And we see that the wall was finished with the, uh, with the help of God. He's, uh, he's finished and he established uh, the wall. And uh, this is the this is the map that uh, the wall around the Jerusalem. That's kind of that much uh, that uh, the wide space, and that they built in fifty-two days. And in chapter thirteen, where we see that now before this Eliashib and the priests having authority over the storeroom of the house of our God was allied with Tobiah. And he had prepared for him a large room. You see, the, the after the building all these things, everything finished, the, the high priest built a chamber for the enemy, Tobia, in the temple. And he came and threw away all these things out of the temple and he cleaned it. Everything. And we see uh, uh, about Nehemiah, we see in uh, uh, words, uh, chapter 6, verse uh, 10. Afterwards, I came to the house and uh, Shemima, the son of Deleha, the, the son of Mehatab, who was a secret informer, and he said, Let us meet together in the house of God within the temple and let us close the doors of the temple, for they are coming to kill you. Indeed, at night they will come to kill you. So, here is the time Nehemiah's life is under threat. And these people said that you come to the temple and escape from the enemies. And he said that I will not enter into the temple. Because he know that the high priest only can enter into the temple, the holy place and the most holy place. So he, if he will enter into the, in the temple, he is going to sin against God. He knows the commandments. He don't want to break the laws. He knows the seriousness of the holiness and the holy place and the most holy place. But, the, but we see the high priest. He made a chamber inside the temple and give to the enemy. He don't know the seriousness of, of the of the holy place and the most holy place. He is going inside every day, worshipping the Lord and praising God and sacrifices everything. But he don't know the value, the holiness of the temple. <clears throat> How the holiness of the temple, the church is coming out? The way we Respect the word of God. We read that First Samuel two words thirty. We read that for those who honor me, I will honor, and those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. So those who honor me, I will honor. The way we respond or we honor God's commandments. That is the way the, the holiness and the divine is coming out. When we are coming to the church every day, every, every Sunday, coming and sitting and praising God, worshipping God, 
How what is how we we feel that is is holy? It's most holy. How the way we respect the place, the the, the situation. We come to the church. There is a, a time nine thirty. We have to come early. That and we have to respect. How much we give respect his words. That's the way the holiness is coming out. The high priest is going every day in the temple and worshiping and sacrifices but he did, didn't know the holiness of the temple he made a chamber to the enemy inside and nehemiah the person he knows that i couldn't enter into the temple that will break the law of god nehemiah glorifies his name god's name in the city is a man of prayer and didn't compromise with any situation is a man of fearless and a man of encouragement for other people and an example of godly man and a great leader a lot of things you can i just go through few few words but you can go home and read all these things very interesting book and a lot of things with a lot of encouragement you will get from this this book and that is uh, that is the man of god we, we have to follow in his example this man of prayer and the man of encouragement he didn't compromise any of the of the laws or the situation of his face let us continue to to go through his life and make an example to our life in our day day to day life let's pray. <clears throat> Lord our gracious heavenly father we thank you and praise you once again for this another wonderful day that you have given to us to come together in your presence to worship you and praise you to adore you the great god that you send your son to the, to the world and save us the sinners to this world to you died on the cross and buried and rose again victoriously and ascended in the right hand of the father and in the city of Christ. Lord what a what a privilege we have your children to come together in your presence to praise you and give thanks to you and afterwards thank you for your words that encouraging us in our life the importance of your words and the holiness the divine things all these things coming in our life through while we are honor your your words thank you for speaking us to to us today morning lord lord we are praying for uh, cs angel he is uh, feeling not well lord extend your hand and touch him and heal him lord uh, in the coming days we want to see him in the uh, uh, among the people and praise you and give thanks to you lord. and also we are praying for jerusha jerusha he is she is going for his uh, her wedding and uh, we are uh, we are praying for her her uh, journey and the days ahead and the bless and the, all the blessing for the wedding time and the families also lord thank you for being with us and uh, thank you for blessing us we ask all these things the most wonderful name lord and savior jesus christ amen